Hi everyone, I'm Alex, this is Big Al Books, and today I'm going to be reviewing a book that I've just recently finished, and one that has really blown me away. I'm talking about The Book of Night Women by Marlon James. So this book came out in 2009, it's Marlon James's second novel, and it's about a girl named Lilith who is born into slavery on a Jamaican sugar plantation in the late 1700s. The Book of Night Woman is a historical fiction novel in that it explores what slavery was like at the time, but it's also a coming-of-age tale. We get to see Lilith grow up and approach womanhood, and what she seems to learn is that the older that she gets, the more dangerous her environment becomes. So it is a very stressful novel, but I have to say this is one of the most powerful books that I have read about slavery. It is right up there with Kindred by Octavia Butler and Beloved by Toni Morrison. Now this book is a lot more recent than those two and it's a lot less well known. It's not even Marlon James's most famous novel, which would be A Brief History of Seven Killings, which came out a few years ago and won the Man Booker Prize. So if you are looking for more of Marlon James to read, or if you want to try reading one of his shorter novels before committing to this beast, then I would highly recommend checking out The Book of Night Women. One disclaimer before we begin, if you are a reader who is uncomfortable with very brutal and graphic depictions of violence, then I would probably stay away from this book. I know that most of us expect violence to a certain degree when approaching a book about slavery. I mean, that is just honest depictions of what was going on at the time, but this book really runs with it and turns it up a notch. Like, this book is intense. There is something very violently disturbing on every other page. I feel like it is just saturated in brutality. I mean, even the first sentence of this book goes, people think blood red, but blood don't got no color, and then proceeds to describe Lilith's mother in the process of bleeding all over the floor and dying during childbirth because she was too young to be having a child. So right from the very beginning, we are entrenched in this world of violence and blood. I'm not particularly a reader who enjoys a lot of violence in a book, but one of the things that I found so fascinating about this book was how even though the subject matter is so difficult to stomach. This is a book that I could not put down, which is weird when you think about it. This is a book that you should just throw at the wall so many times and not be able to pick up again. But Marlon James is so skilled as a writer that he just keeps you burning through this kind of book. You almost can't put it down. I think I read about 350 pages of this in one day because I just had to, I was living in that world for better or for worse. So I wanted to explore some of the elements that made this novel so strong in spite of its very horrific subject matter. One of my favorite aspects about this book is the way that it covers history. So when I thought back on all the books that I've read or all the films that I've watched about slavery, I realized that pretty much all of them were about the American South. So I had a lot of things to learn about what was going on in the West Indies under European colonial rule. And it's hard to imagine slavery being any worse than it was in the American South, and yet somehow that is what was going on in the West Indies. Not only were the plantation owners and overseers incredibly violent, but the working conditions were so brutal. And on sugar plantations during the harvest season, which is five months of the year, slaves were often expected to work almost around the clock, getting everything done in time. Another situation that made West Indian slavery a bit different than American slavery was the ratio between white people and black people. So in America, there was a bit more of a balance but in Jamaica at the time of this book, for every one white person, there were 33 black people. So white people were very outnumbered and that made the situation very volatile. They had a kind of tenuous hold on their power. The book mentions the many frequent rebellions that were going on in Jamaica at the time and this book is charged with the spirit of revolt. And this really freaks out the white characters in this book because they are never really safe or secure with their power. And that partly explains the harshness of the punishments that they give in this book because they are really afraid for their own lives and they're trying with everything that they can to squash any rebellion or any kind of rising up. So this book is essentially a powder keg just waiting to explode. So it is very tense, which brings us to the next thing that I love about this book, which is its intense plot. 
part of the reason this book is such a page turner is because the narrative is so high stakes. I mean, for Lilith, danger doesn't just lurk around the corner. Danger is just everywhere. It just surrounds every decision that she makes is life or death. And we have to remember that she is a young, uneducated teenage girl. Like she is going to make stupid decisions. And sometimes it's not even her decisions that have bad consequences or get her into trouble. Sometimes it's just simple accidents. At the plantation, they are hosting a New Year's Eve ball and Lilith at the last minute is pulled in to be a server at this ball. So she's not trained at all. And then she goes coming out of the kitchen with a full tray of hot soup and a white woman walks into her and she spills this scalding soup on her. And the plantation owner, just loses it and he immediately starts punching her in the face and he loses all control and he's just attacking this girl. As a server myself, I can definitely relate to dropping something and causing an accident, but what I can't relate to is someone trying to kill me for it right afterwards or being in a room surrounded by passive people who aren't interested in helping you. So it's a very disturbing scene and Marlon James is very good at undermining that myth of European people being more civilized. The white characters in this novel believe themselves to be superior because they have access to reason and rational thinking, but you can see from the way this plantation owner goes totally apeshit that he is not being very reasonable, that his emotions have completely taken over and that he is a very violent and aggressive person at heart. And what's equally disturbing is the way that the guests of the ball, once this violent situation leaves the room, they just go back to having a grand old time as if that didn't kill the vibe of the party at all. That's just kind of normal life. So it makes you ask the question, like what kind of people are these? The white characters in this novel have access to arts and culture they know how to read and they have these fine works of literature lying around their houses and it makes you wonder what's the point of it all? I mean they are engaging with these wonderful works of human thought yet they are still these very deranged violent people benefiting on the oppression of others. So that makes you thinking about what's the point of the arts or literature if it's not challenging who you are as an individual and trying to make you better yourself. Just as Marlon James undermines the idea that white people are always civilized, he also undermines the narrative that black people were always victims with no agency. And in order to give some control back to his characters, he centers the plot around a planned rebellion. So Lilith encounters this group of women, they're the night women from the title, they're a group of women who meet up in the middle of the night in the secret cave and they are planning a revolt where they are going to overthrow the plantation owners and go from there. So this is kind of like a Quentin Tarantino later film situation where it feels like this kind of rewriting of history where you are like rooting for the oppressed people to just band together and kick some ass, like changing up the narrative that we're so familiar with. And in a lot of ways, this isn't really rewriting history because there were so many rebellions happening at the time. And it's so cool to see this badass feminist gang of women planning how to take charge. But another incredible thing about this book is that it is filled with morally ambiguous characters. So while initially you really want to root for the night woman and you're hoping everything goes as planned, but then you start to wonder what are the actual costs of a revolution? What does it take to make it all happen? Is it worth it? And then we start to realize that each of these women have their own motives behind organizing this revolution, which makes things even more complicated. The main character Lilith is a perfect example of a morally ambiguous character. When I started the book I was kind of expecting someone naive and sympathetic but Lilith has quite the personality and she is not always easy to like. She is responsible for a lot of violent acts, she can be really rude when talking to people, and she has this sense of pride 
and narcissism that can sometimes be really frustrating. But then when you think about the environment that she's grown up in, it also really makes sense. And that's kind of what people are. They are complex and not easy to sum up in a single sentence. Even the white characters in this book have multi-dimensional personalities, which it would be easy to just make them super evil villains. That's kind of what they seem like at the outset. But you'll see the characters here will be very cruel and violent in one scene and then turn around and be so forgiving or tender that it makes things so confusing for Lilith trying to figure out how to deal with white people because they can be so inconsistent and that makes her life even more perilous. The last thing I'm going to mention about this book is the writing style. Marlon James uses Jamaican patois throughout the narrative and for some readers that might be disorienting but I found it very accessible and mesmerizing and it's very easy to get into the rhythm of it and it takes you into this different headspace and it's particularly useful for understanding our narrator and I love changing up language when you're approaching historical fiction it just makes it seem a little bit more authentic especially in a tale about slavery it wouldn't seem right if we were using standard proper English because that's the language of the colonizers of the oppressors the dialect just made everything more convincing. You could really see how Lilith's mind worked and how people were communicating together and just made it a richer reading experience. That's all I'm going to say today about the Book of Night Women by Marlon James. I would strongly encourage you to check it out if you are at all interested and please let me know in the comments if you have any other recommendations for thought-provoking, challenging books about slavery. Thank you so much for watching and see you again!